Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. Tracy Lynn, and this is our summer long staycation destination series. Every Friday during the noon report, we'll spotlight a staycation destination that's not far from home and won't break the bank. This week, we're taking you to Letchworth State Park in western New York. My name is Elijah Kruger. My title is environmental educator. So, Elijah, Letchworth State Park is a destination that offers numerous waterfalls and plenty of commanding views. Would you briefly tell us about the types of trails that Letchworth offers to visitors? Sure. By far the most popular trail in the park is the Gorge Trail. It'll be trail number one on a park map. The Gorge Trail offers wonderful views of the gorge. It walks you by all three of the major waterfalls in the park. Anyone that's just got a little bit of time to spend in the park, that's always where we send them to get the best experience in a short amount of time. But we've got lots and lots of trails that will walk you through the woods to some pretty unique habitats. We've got 70 miles or more of trail total in the park. Wow. And should we bring any special footwear for the trails? None of our trails are super, super difficult, but we certainly recommend closed-toed shoes. And after a good amount of precipitation, something that you don't mind getting a little wet and muddy. Okay, great. Good to know. What other sorts of activities can guests join in at Letchworth State Park? We really are a four-season park. We do programming all four seasons of the year, educational programming. Hiking certainly is a popular activity, but in spring and summer, folks can bring a kayak and go down the Genesee River themselves or do some whitewater rafting with Adventure Calls Outfitters here in the park. There's fishing available. Bird watching is certainly popular spring and summer, but even in the wintertime, there's plenty to do. We've got an extensive cross-country ski and snowshoe trail system, and we also allow snowmobiling in the park in the wintertime. Great. I love the variety. And is there a pool as well? Yep. There's an Olympic-sized swimming pool. It's got a designated diving well at the north end of the park, which is by the Mount Morris entrance. So people can stay for a day to cook out and hike, or they can lodge in a variety of accommodations, right? Yes. We've got the High Banks Tent and Trailer Campground has 270 campsites. We've got 81 cabins in the park. For folks that are looking for a less rustic overnight experience in the park, there's the Glen Iris Inn, as well as a a handful of rental homes available in the park. Great. There are several entranceways to the park. Would you tell us something distinct about the main ones? Yeah, there are five entrances total into Letchworth State Park. Four are on the west side of the park, the west side of the Genesee River. One is on the east side, we call the parade grounds entrance, and we consider the east side of the park the more rustic side. It's not nearly as visited by patrons here in the park. Many of our visitors that come from Rochester or areas north of the park often use the Mount Morris entrance gate. When entering there, you're nearby the swimming pool. The Mount Morris Dam is at the north end of the park as well. The Perry entrance is closest to our campground. Heading a little bit further south, the Castile and Portageville entrances, both at the south end of the park, would both get you into the sort of southwest corner, what we refer to as the heart of the park. And either entrance gives you quick access to the Humphrey Nature Center, the Glen Iris Inn, the William Pryor Letchworth Museum, the Gorge Trail, and all three of the big waterfalls in the park. And that's the area where the park really started because it was originally a private home. Yes, William Pryor Letchworth donated his land in the early 1900s. Originally, it was his 1,000-acre estate that he donated to the state of New York to be kept as public parkland. And that 1,000 acres included the three major waterfalls, what we call Upper Falls, Middle Falls, and Lower Falls. And over the years, uh, the state has continued to purchase more land further north along the Genesee River. So by now, we comprise just over 14,000 acres. I believe we're the top five state park in New York in terms of land area. Elijah, I know there's some structures there that were built by members of the Civilian Conservation Corps back in the 30s and 40s. 
Yeah, there were actually a total of four Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, camps here in the park. They were doing work here in the park between 1933 and 1941, and they were responsible for building a lot of the picnic shelters that you still see today and still are able to use in the park. There are some really neat stone top picnic tables, the stones of which they quarried right here in the park. There are lots and lots of stone walls. The CCC here in Letchworth, as well as many other places, are well known for their great masonry work. The cabins they built here in the park for us, as well as the Lower Falls Footbridge Trail, which spans the Genesee River. There still are some camp remnants still available. The park has done a good job of maintaining at least some of the chimneys from the old barracks that were there. So some of our trails, you can walk and see some of these historic relics from the CCC. What's kind of interesting, of course, the CCC program ended essentially when the U.S. entered World War II. So one of the CCC camps here in Letchworth, the Lower Falls camp, was actually converted to a German prisoner of war camp. And when you go down and visit the area of where the Lower Falls camp was located, there's an interpretive sign that tells you all about that kind of history and actually laid out in the field are lettered blocks where you can kind of map together for yourself how that camp would have been laid out. Wow, I had no idea. Thank you for uncovering that for us. Elijah, Letchworth has been called the Grand Canyon of the East and was recently named this year's top state park in America. Home to go based the ranking on scores from activities, accommodations, solitude, and wildlife. I know that Letchworth actually was given a 10 out of 10 for wildlife. What kind of animals can be seen regularly in the woods of Letchworth? Because the park covers such a huge amount of land, most of the parkland is designated as bird conservation area. So each spring and summer, we can have at least 120 or so different kinds of birds that may be nesting in the park. Bald eagle sightings are not uncommon in the woods. We've got lots of deer, there are red fox, there's the occasional black bear sighting by some of our visitors. But we also have put out some trail cameras into some of the deeper woods in the park where visitors typically don't explore out to. And we've captured some really neat photos and videos of some of the less commonly seen animals in the woods, like uh, bobcat and coyote and and, uh, fisher, which is an elusive member of the weasel family. Yeah, and some of those are nicer to watch on video than up close and personal. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Is there a cost to get into the park in general? During our busy season, typically spring through autumn, there is a $10 entrance fee. Okay, and that's per person no matter what age? That's actually per vehicle, so a whole family in the minivan, it's only $10 for the vehicle. Good to know. Elijah, where can people find out more about Letchworth State Park before they make the drive? If you go to www.parks.ny.gov and search for Letchworth State Park, you can find park updates, any trail maps you might need, and any other information that you might be looking for about the park. We hope you've enjoyed coming along on our staycation destination. You can hear all the podcasts online. Join us next week as we visit a new destination in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania.